Welcome to our first episode of our Yankees podcast. We are the Miked Up Savages. I'm here with my uh, co-host, Kevin Murph. Uh, we call him Murph over here. And we're going to talk today about the opening day for the New York Yankees. Are, are you excited? Oh, dude, I'm so excited. It, it can't come fast enough at this point. Oh, yeah. We got it's, – it's an ESPN game, too, I'm pretty sure. We got yeah, Colbert yeah. Scherzer. I mean – Prime time game. Prime time. And it's you're asking for the best out of every player right right out of the gate. Yeah. How well are you you are uh, thinking the Yankees are going to do this year? Uh, I think they're going to be pretty good. I honestly do. I think they're probably like number one, if not the number two team in the league right now. Uh, they just got so much depth, and they showcased that last year, right? Breaking the record with injuries, guys going up and down constantly and then guys showing up you know guys like Gio Urshela uh, Mike Talkman so I think this is a very deep team I think that's the that's going to be the, the key for the season right players being uncomfortable um, comfortable in uncomfortability and then depth who's going to be able to who's going to have the best depth who's going to be able to adapt and I think the Yankees are that team who's going to overcome the most adversity throughout the season will yeah. be another uh, major thing to deal with this season um, we don't have Chapman I'm pretty sure for the opening series. No, we're not gonna have him. I I hope I don't know if that's gonna impact this in a in a in a in a big way. Hopefully not. Hopefully we can get past the Nationals. I, I they had a a big trouble with the Phillies this past uh, their exhibition games for summer camp. They got Harper and Didi Gregorius uh, smoked some off of Scherzer, and I mean, yeah. shaky shaky start for Cole, but. I mean, he Miguel Andujar took him deep. I know it's it's our guys. Uh, they've they've watched him for two and a half years. Um, Ford also tearing it up. Is it is there really a battle at first base between Voight and Ford, or am Absolutely. I just like kidding? Like I Absolutely. Really Absolutely. I I think the Yankees secretly want it to be Ford because mm-hmm. he's that left power hitting bat that they say so desperately need. I think they really hope Ford is kind of like the real deal. Uh, nothing against Luke Voigt. I think he's also a really good player. Um, it's just one of those things where he's not – again, we have too many righties in this in this lineup, and I think they really need another lefty, especially a power bat for that short porch. Mm-hmm. And so I think those two are going to definitely go battle, split time. Even the, like this is the factor that he's a homegrown player. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, I, I would like to see him succeed. I'm not going to – I'd he, he, honestly, I'd be good with either of them playing. Yeah, so. yeah mostly. You like got, to lose a little weight, though. Not gonna lie to you. Oh yeah, got, but I mean, he he dropped the tank off the guy on the Phillies last night. That's true. Um, that yoga that he did in the off season must have been helping him somewhere or, or shape or form because he he did he's done pretty well in his summer camp. Yeah. yeah. So far, we have uh, Wednesday. We have Cole Scherzer, probably Paxton versus Strasburg, and then we have um, I would even slate Clark Schmidt in there. That is, that, is that a bold move? That'd probably be bold. Bold. That'd probably be, I I think it depends. If we win the first two games, then you're probably like, why not? Right? Let, let him get out. Let him get the, his first like start yeah. out there. Yeah. The goal, the goal to add going into every series is win the series. Go two one every series. That's the goal, right? You don't have to sweep everyone. Two one is acceptable, especially against the reigning World Series champs who have yeah. a phenomenal starting rotation. And I think if you can take a game off of Scherzer and of Strasburg, I think maybe you take that gamble. It's probably too bold. I think, if anything, they might try Montgomery. They mm-hmm. might slot him Montgomery at the three spot because he showed – He really, was really good. Yeah. Really good this spring training. So, I'm excited. Nice up the Mets. He, yeah. He pulling the string. You can tell he's gotten a lot better. Even his mile per hours are up, like two ticks. Yeah. He's looking good. And two takes can play a, a big part into his off-speed game. I mean, the, the I'm pretty happy with the way the Yankees played in the summer camp. It really didn't – Aaron Judge looked really good. He looked bad, Looked dude. really good. I mean, making plays in the outfield, hitting home runs. I mean, could not, not only hitting home runs, but pulling them to the left. That's something he barely did last year. He just <laughs> didn't do last year. And it was like, whether it's the rib or whatever, dude, he just didn't do it. And then to see him just – crank to the left it's just like thank you like he's 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 back he's back mm-hmm. so who do you think's gonna another off topic who do you think's gonna fill in for chapman for the time being probably Brent. 
I think Zach Britton mm-hmm. is probably going to get that spot. Uh, Ottavina moves up to the setup spot. Uh, he probably like Ottavina normally would probably be like the second setup spot, like seventh inning guy. He's probably more like the eighth inning now, and Britton's probably going to slide into that closer spot, be more comfortable with it, I'd assume. Mm-hmm. And I know I've seen Clint Frazier playing with a mask. I mean, props to him for dropping a tank at City Field, you know, with the mask on, just to add add that little extra oomph to those Met fans. But I mean, it he's always been a good hitter. Now it's just like, will the Yankees give him a chance? Like I, I kind of want to see him a little bit this year, but again, maybe he is that trade bait at that mm. in August for the what is it? August thirty first, August thirtieth, yeah, something like that. August somewhere around there. Yeah. I I personally I hope he finds success in New York. I think it's just so tough right now because you got a guy like Gardy who's still going to start in left probably. Yeah. Stan, you got Talkman, Hicks. Judge, not to mention Floreal, who's going to get some time up there. Wade can play outfield and do hard. So it's just – it's such a big log jam. So it's like, where where does he find the time to play? Especially with the suspect defense, which has gotten better, by the way. And I think his swing – he's made some adjustments. They look kind of funky, but, hey, like you whatever said. Whatever works. Whatever works, dude. Whatever works. Whatever pays the bills. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I just like – I just, but I like his mental this, uh, this spring training. Like, yeah. listen to him in his interviews – he sounds a lot more mature. He sounds he said, like, I'll do whatever it ta- whatever the team needs me to do. And before he was more of like, what else do I need to do? Like I, I should, I deserve to be on the major league roster. I deserve to be in the, in the starting lineup. Like now he's starting to accept his role. May- maybe that gets him the chance that he deserves. Exactly. I, I definitely think would want him to get that spot. I want him to get a chance. But just, I'm going to put this out there to all the, the, the Yankee haters, like our outfield any anyone in our outfield can be a starter on any of your teams. Absolutely. They they and they will produce at a, at a high level. I mean, Talkman came out of nowhere last year and he tore it up. I mean, if we had him in the playoffs, it would have been a, a major advantage. It's another lefty bat um, with with a little pop. You got and now we didn't have Hicks all last year. I mean, and now hopefully Stanton is healthy. I mean, he he dropped a, a bomb against the Mets. Well, that was against the Mets too. Yeah, yep. it's Mets. Just wanted to add that in there, Met fans. Um, but he had me worried. I'm not gonna lie. He had some pretty sloppy at bats, looking like chasing those, those yeah. pull sliders out and away. Those are those are his kryptonite every time. But then you saw it why he swings at those pitches because when they hang him, he pimps them. That's just yeah. how that works. It's just how he how he does it. Gary Sanchez is looking in, in pretty pretty tip top shape right now. I mean, yeah. he hit that one off the Mets and he, he gave it a nice little pimp job. He let he let him know. He let him know. I think Gary's gonna come a little different this year. Um, I hope so. You got Higashioka backing him up. Uh, it's sixty games. I don't. It may just end up being like a forty twenty split, forty five. Yeah. Yeah. Kind that. of games. But I'm I'm beyond looking forward to this season. I have a few more questions to ask you, and then we'll wrap this up. Let the first episode marinate for the for the new fans of our podcast. But who are you looking most forward to see playing besides Garrett Cole this season? Besides Garrett Cole, oof. Uh, who do I, I really want to see how Torres plays that short. That's a, that's a guy who I really want to see. Uh, I also want to see Paxton. I want to see how he does in a contract year, uh, getting that number two spot, number two starter, Sevy gone. And uh, I think he he really wants to succeed in New York. I think. There's a potential for a, a re-signing, an extension, but it all depends how he does this year. I don't think he had a bad uh, season last year by any means. Uh, probably not the numbers he would have wanted, but I think he's a guy who, who really wants to succeed this year, and, I, and I'm excited to see it. I really want to see him perform well. Paxton has the ability to do it. He's done it before. He showed off, he showed off his uh, the reason why he earned his pinstripes in uh, the playoffs last year against the Astros in the playoffs. I mean, um, I, I like Paxton. There's no reason why they shouldn't um, re-sign him. Uh, LeMayhew, I think this is also his contract year, yeah? Yep. So I, I think LeMayhew could he possibly even have a bigger year than last year. I mean, season? He, yeah, absolutely. yeah I, he could easily hit 300 again, uh, another contract year for them, um, for him, of course. But um, most I'm looking forward to is Clark Schmidt. I didn't see him in any of the – I don't know if he pitched in any of the – summer games versus the actual opponents but he he dominated against our guys and 
if you we uh, again i'll say we're, we're biased over here now because we're, we're on our own there will be a but before i can do there will be a met series where we just have to get his the host of that show to actually film in his spare time now but clark schmidt back to the story clark schmidt should it did good against our guys so there's no reason why he can't do good against other guys because you know, we have some of the best players in the league and I, I will yeah. I will back that up. There'll be starters on your team. They they will dominate in the NL. They'll dominate in any league. So um, I'm I'm really looking forward to this year. And I hope you are. I mean, you said you were too, but yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. Thursday can't come fast enough at this point. It's gonna it's gonna be weird not seeing anyone in the stands. But yeah. I mean, they the players are gonna. I know they're gonna. Yankees are gonna come out with a little vengeance this year. And uh, it's Aaron Judge's revenge tour, in my well, opinion. Yeah. Absolutely. Because uh, he's, he's got some a little bit of some proof, you know. Oh yeah. Well, people are kind of down him. <laughs> he, a lot of people are doubting Aaron Judge because of the injuries and stuff, but I, I think this year he's going to show out, and he's already shown out this year so far in summer camp. So I mean, looks real good. Yeah. And and Met fans, but we're we're coming for you this year. So we're playing you a little bit more. You yeah, some of is going to count for a lot more this year. Yeah. I mean, you you guys may say this is I'm talking to the Met fans right now. You guys may say that like the this doesn't count, but there will never be another Corona Cup. So I want that title. Even if we may not say that we won twenty eight, whatever, da, 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 whatever. But I, I want the I want a championship because in New it's New York in New York it's championship or bust. And if you don't have that attitude, you don't belong in New York. Exactly. And I think that that's all that covers up for the first episode of the Miked Up Savages. Thank you, Murph, for joining me today. Thank and I'm going to let um, Luke Voigt take us out on the on the outro. Oh, yeah. Later. Later. No, it, you know, a lot of, not a lot of coaches, I think, would uh, back it up and use that type of word. But, you know, I think we appreciate it. And I, we are a bunch of savages. And, you know, we got to keep going.